Welcome in to another edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. And today uh, we're going to visit again with Dr. Travis Taylor. Uh, you know, we, we have been working with Dr. Taylor for good gracious. I mean, oh, quite I mean, a for, while, for years quite a while. On, on all kinds of things. And we've done a podcast with him. He's been on uh, the big show during the week as well. But Bubba, season four of Skinwalker Ranch uh, is about to launch. Uh, if, if you're if you're listening to this or watching it, and and the launch date is already hit and gone, it's already underway on the History Channel. Bubba, I, I don't know. I don't. Do you want to start with the discomfort first? Um, when well, we welcome welcome uh, back, Travis. Yeah, right, welcome back, and Thank we're glad you guys you're here for back. having me. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thank so you for having me. Let's run just a little bit. Uh, you're an engineer, best-selling author. You made that real clear to me a minute ago. <laughs> uh, you uh, you <laughs> we, uh, that was a joke. Uh, hold a PhDs in optical science and engineering, aerospace Ooh. systems engineering, master's degree in physics and astronomy. 25 years, you've worked on various high-tech programs for the Department of Defense and for NASA. So we, I want to make sure if you're meeting Travis for the first time, you know that. We, 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 we like you. We have a good time together. We do have to uncomfortably ask, um, is our current relationship with you in Skinwalker Ranch, is it toxic? Uh, have you heard everything that's happened to Bubba since you were here last? I've I've heard some of the stories. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm curious. Uh, you know what the extent of it all is. Well, I won't run down the whole list because mm-hmm. it'll take most of this podcast. <laughs> but I'll just hit the high spots: uh, gallbladder removal, liver cancer, house destroyed by a tornado. Other than that, <laughs> we're doing fine. Well, I, I hope that uh, what did it did it coincide or correlate with our last uh, yeah it was meeting? it was right after we had you on last time right <laughs> we've wow. actually broken Bubba's life down yeah. to pre Travis post Travis uh, we I, considered a lead shield today right, right. <laughs> well I don't think a lead shield would help right <laughs> the, there is a thing they call the hitchhiker right. uh, mm-hmm. that follows people around yeah uh, I could I, I could tell you that uh, last week I was given a presentation. Uh, corporate wide of the company I work for now, and and the lady gets my lavalier microphone ready, and she holds it in her hand, the light's green on it, she hands it to me. As soon as I touch it, it turns red, and she did that three times, and we could ended up not, Travis, not being able to use those see, mics. Th- this is not helping. Th- this is the kind of stuff <laughs> that we've been experiencing. I told Bubba that I, I'm, I mean, I wanted to be on Skinwalker. I did. And we almost got on doing uh, an experiment, right? Uh, launching some noise. I still want to do that into by the, the way. well easy. <laughs> um, and I told him, I said, I, Travis, I, thanks, but well, uh, I mean, you and I just <laughs> talked about you know the Marvel movies Endgame. Yeah, I don't want to launch something you know out into the universe that we're held responsible for the destruction of, of, yeah. of you know I mean when it comes back when a universal yeah. planetary war begins the I mean, network actually said the same thing <laughs> 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 well this skinwalker ranch thing good gracious and and you've been part of a number of things but and season four, four. is about to hit the air and I believe it's April 15th I've seen 18th the, Tuesday 18th, April 18th I've seen the promos already yeah, yeah. and uh, it's impressive and if you have not seen seen the first three seasons go binge, binge watch yeah, that yeah. and uh, did i mention i can't speak since you've been here right. oh, and uh <laughs> so you, you, so you can catch up and see see where the, you guys are at but um and, and i don't know how much you can talk about what's coming up more than what's in the promo but um we know that this ranch 500 some odd acres has a lot of strange things going on has a history of that right. uh back to, Th- thousands of years. Yeah, I mean, back pre-America, this area has had problems. Um, and it looked like when we left you guys on the last season that you had a theory that something was in the air hovering over this ranch. Uh, yeah, we, we've we made va- various measurements with uh, uh, microwave detection, radio wave uh, 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 triangulation, We've found things on the uh, with the helicopter being pushed out of the way or detected. Uh, um, it's collision avoidance radar saying something's underneath. That, can us. I tell you that was one of the the really weirdest things to me when that helicopter kept saying you mm-hmm. were a few feet off the ground when you were obviously up at like, about ten thousand yeah, feet. Yeah, we were, I remember we and, were ten thousand feet above sea level, five thousand right. feet above ground right. level, and and it was saying there was something under us thirty eight feet, feet yeah. thirty eight feet at one time. 
and uh, and 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 we had the instrument checked out. It was perfectly uh, fine, mm-hmm. and so they're they're we and we found something in the video actually flying under us uh, after afterwards when we went back and looked at. Oh the, yeah, and 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 so we also the GPS in that area is is odd and jammed. And uh, so we found things. We we made a point to find out what was going on there uh, uh, last <clears throat> summer, and wait till April eighteenth, and you'll see some things that will absolutely fascinate and amaze you. All right. So season four, what you're saying is, and I've had to quote Bachman Turner Overdrive a lot lately. Would you say you ain't seen nothing yet? You ain't seen nothing yet, but baby. Uh, but, but, do you, but do you realize what we've already seen? What we've already – do you realize what statement you're making? I mean and, – and you keep going back. And it's one of these things that amazes me. You keep going back. Will you not rest until something happens? I mean, I mean, <laughs> you you you've been glowing at one point. You you were you were you know urinating. I mean, the stuff out of your body. I mean, you know, you you, you had some sickness. Yeah, you, I had radiation been, sickness. You, yeah, you, you've been sick. Yep. Uh, you, so, Travis, let me you, ask you. You just that. have to know, don't you? Yeah. You just have to know. Let, let it's me, important. Let, yeah, it is. Let's get to some theories and questions people are emailing mm-hmm. us. Where Skinwalker Ranch is, it is to the east or what would be downrange of the nuclear test yeah. facility it, in it, Nevada. It's a long way, though, from uh, the Nevada test site. You know, And it, that was one of the first things we looked at. Right. We checked right. for residual radiation right. and things like that, and there's nothing there. But uh, we blew up a 1,000 atomic bombs there. I mean, that's a lot. You, if, you, if you told the average guy on the street, could the U.S. survive a 1,000 atomic bombs, they'd say, well, no. And I said, well, we've already blown those many that, that many up on ourselves yeah. out there at the test range. Well, they were small tactical right. nukes, too, though. We didn't blow up like the Russian Tsar Bomba or right. anything like right. that, but yeah. But is it is it possible that some of that could be radiation that has drifted in? No, uh, because we know what those decay products are, and we've looked for them. Okay. And you can see them in the residual background, and we know, we know what they are, and they're way below safe safe norms. And and what we're seeing, what we're measuring, are spikes in the gamma rays. And I'll tell right. you this: that we did, we took a, a, a calibrated NIST traceable instrument out there that would measure the spectrum of the gamma rays, mm-hmm. and they were at five hundred and eleven kilo electron volts. And let me explain what that means. That's the frequency of gamma rays or X rays that happens when you have antimatter and matter collide. When you have an electron and a positron collide, they blow up and they create these gamma rays. That doesn't happen anywhere except uh, atom smashers, uh, you know, big particle colliders, and in science fiction. You know, that's what run the warp yeah, core. Right. Not, not to go Trek. to Star Trek on you there, yeah, Rick. But, I'm yeah. fine. You know. <laughs> I'm fine. Well, so many times, you know, our science fiction <clears throat> ends up being true later on because, you know, people had a vision or thought something might work sure. and it ends up working. <clears throat> um, so w- what do you attribute that to? Well, I don't know, and the and the fact Ask the, the question the <laughs> fact that uh, it happens at such high levels and in very localized spots, that's not a technology that we have, and, and so it's not something naturally occurring, and it's not from any technology I've ever heard of. So it's something unique, either to that location or to whatever that phenomena. Can it be harmful to you? Oh, yes. In fact, we've had several times where we've had to evacuate an area because the radiation level got too high. We'll come back more with Travis Taylor when Rick and Bubba University, the podcast continues. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. All right, so Dr. Travis Taylor is with us. Skinwalker Ranch, the secret of Skinwalker Ranch, season four. Uh, if you're watching this and listening to this prior to April 18th, know that that's when season four starts on the History Channel, 9 p.m. Central. Uh, and if it's past April 18th, you need to go catch up because it's home. Uh, all right, so know that. Now, here's some things I want to tell you about, too. Uh, Skinwalker, and you said hyphen ranch.com. Skinwalker that's right, yeah. hyphen ranch.com. This is an insider website. Yes. Yeah. What does that mean? Okay, so that's our official website uh, that we created ourselves. The cast created it, and it has uh, we have live feeds of, from the ranch real time. And if you go on and join that, find where it says insiders on the menu and click and join it. It's real inexpensive. It's like eight dollars a month or something like that. 
and uh, and they the insiders we actually right now have about five thousand or so, and they have a spreadsheet that's on the website of ideas for experiments that we can do. And they're also constantly looking at the data that we put there that you don't see on the show. And, they figure, and, and, and they're they doing their own analysis, feeding back to us information. They've already found some anomalies that we've missed. Bubba, this is, you, you're, you gotta be all, you got to be all over this. I know. So it's important to do the hyphen, though. Mm-hmm. Skinwalker-ranch.com for the insider option. That's correct. And I bet you're getting some valuable information, as you oh, said. Oh, absolutely. We've got people wanting to volunteer to come out, but we have to warn them, no, you can't do that because right. it could be if you showed up and we're doing an experiment, it could be dangerous. Yeah. So, because you do blow a few things up and dig a lot of holes. Yeah, well, do. we have a high power. We had a, a kilowatt laser out there last right. year scanning the mesa, and that would have blinded anybody if it would hit them. So, right. if we didn't know they were there. Yeah. So we're we're this is 512 acres. Brandon Fugel owns this, or he he he's it's passed through several people, but he's he, the owner. He's yes. the current mm-hmm. owner. Yes. Um, and as Bubba said, there's been problems, uh, issues going for a long, long time. Nobody can can find the answer. Is that what this land is all it's about now? I, I would just imagine with all this, you know, uh, Bub and I are fortunate enough to have some land where we hunt and fish and ride four wheelers and spend time. I'm assuming that Fugel's family doesn't get to do that. Do, do people still just come to this land for recreation or no? Uh, there's no, no way. It's right? an investigation. He uh, bought it for an investigation uh, for this only. Yes. Uh, Travis yes. and, and some people have suggested this, and I, I want to address it. We're we're addressing we the things that people. You know, or saying behind the curtain, there's some people think that Brandon, who is just a great businessman mm-hmm. and, and obviously has been very successful real in real estate, estate yep. has branched out and has come up with buying this ranch, doing the TV show, doing the road shows, doing the merchandise and just keep this, you know, this happens. That It's a, it's a, it's a theme park for investigative yeah, no, things. That, that's not true. In fact, you can ask Brandon, he'll tell you he hasn't made a dime off of the show or the, that's or the ranch. Yeah. Right. And now we get paid to be there. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, people, when they go to a job, they expect to get paid. Right. I, if I'm missing time on my day job, I'm going to have to fill in that somehow. Right. right so, so we're getting paid. Sure. But we're working our rear ends off to try and figure out what this is. And it's not it's not a TV show. And I want to make sure that everybody understands that. We're, this is sort of a new paradigm that we're trying to propagate. It's a investigation that's being documented for TV. And there's a difference. Okay, we we had a private conversation the last time you were on after the show, and and I'll, I'm I'm not going to divulge all of that unless you want to. But I ask you, I said, you know, is this stage for TV? And you said no. Yeah, absolutely not. And, and, and you you even told me, if you don't mind me sharing, that if the TV show is over, you're still going to work on this project because it's driving you crazy. That's exactly right. <laughs> that is exactly right. Because it to me, it's a, it's a moral imperative that we figure out what's going on there. Uh, you know, when I first went out there, I thought it was going to be like Scooby Doo. You know, well, we were going right. to look behind the curtain. There's going to be old man Withers. Yeah, right. And he'd pull his mask off. You and know? he could have done it. Had been for those pesky kids. That's right. <laughs> right. And, and 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 so we haven't found old man Withers. And what we've found is there's phenomena occurring that are really unexplainable and beyond uh, physics that I understand. And so it could be a whole new regime of science and technology for humanity if we uncover what this really is. And I know this is part of that question. Why there? Why there? In, in, this, in this location. And, and Travis, I know we're going to ask you to give us your theory on some things. I mean, mm-hmm. you don't have to back it up with proof. We don't have to have scientific. No, no. But to Rick's question, is there something about that spot that bothers you, where it's located, something that's around it? What, what, give me your gut, what you think about at night when you lay down that you wouldn't say on the TV. And we're not <laughs> closing the door on anything. No. You, you can go yeah, supernatural. Yeah. You can go alien beings. You yeah. can go, you know, some this kind world, of— This world, that world. Like you said, science we just hadn't discovered yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't know what it is, but it's in the, the low central part of the big bowl of the Uinta Basin. And I'm convinced that the Uinta Basin was created by a comet impact, you know, a million years ago or how many millions of years ago. And that's right. what caused the salt flats also to the west of it. Uh, and uh, it's really interesting to me that there are ancient legends. The Utes have a legend. Actually, it's the pre-Utes. The, the Fremonts have a legend that they were all brought there by their god. They called the first man on a rainbow uh, and he has this wielded this thing that brought the lightning. Sounds like Thor. And mm-hmm. then, uh, but uh, that might be how 
primitive folks would describe a modern spaceship. Well, they said they came from somewhere. Yeah, they said yeah. they came from somewhere else, right? Elsewhere to here. And right. then also uh, the uh, the LDS folks, you know, uh, they the angel Moroni came down and told them to go uh, go to Salt Lake and, and they would find great riches. And, and that's where they ended up being is out there near where the ranch is. And it's, it's a really interesting uh, phenomena that there's so many different really, – there's others that suggest there – uh, what it is, could it be some extraterrestrial artifact, uh, re- religious artifact? Uh, you know, actually, one of the producers asked me, uh, it's one of the, he's also a producer on Oak Island, and he says, what if it's the same kind of thing like at Oak Island? It turns out to be some religious artifact buried in the Mesa. And I said, well, who's to say that that religious artifact isn't also an extraterrestrial artifact or something else or I'm I'm pretty convinced now that it's not just Mother Nature, but I don't oh, know, I don't know what it is. That's what I would, see because I'm looking over here. I, <laughs> I'm looking at all the things that you've studied: engineer, uh, you optical science, aerospace, uh, you know, physics, astronomy. So I would think your mind is always saying, "I have to rule out all my knowledge in these things first. Yes, because because I, I you don't jump to like a lot of people do. They'll jump to the alien or the supernatural oh, yeah, first. Right. That's not how you're wired. No. Because you've got all this studying that you've done, all this knowledge you have access to. So you you were like, I'll tell you one thing, with all this, I, we'll figure it out. We, it, we've <laughs> created uh, sort of models where for it to be described by something natural, this has to happen, this has to happen, this has to happen, this has to happen. And at some point, the sort of exotic explanation seems more mundane than all the right things just falling into place, Right. And so we, we, again, we have no idea what it is, but I can tell you this, we've got UFOs. I mean, it looked like actual nuts and bolts things on camera. Now we have, uh, have them in high speed infrared. We have them with uh, radar detection. We have them with LIDAR detection. We have all sorts of phenomena that we've seen now that just cannot be explained, explained away. And people are going to say, you know, it's TV, but I'm telling you, this is not a TV show. This is a scientific investigation that we're documenting for TV. So, uh, when 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 you you know, I want to make sure I have this right, and I know I talked to you about this at the show last time. But y'all are experiencing things like a you know an old Indian walks into your trailer and and, and visits with you. That 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 actually is something that I mean, and it could have come from. A dream. It could. I, I mean, I guess. I think I just say that to make it make us all feel better. But, <laughs> but I mean, because I think you know the difference between a dream and, and something like that. But, but things like that have happened to people where they're they are seeing things that seem un, un, unable to be explained by science. Well, that we know. I can tell you this, and I won't tell you the spoiler. Uh, but, and I don't know if they're going to actually put this part of it in the show. Uh, but last summer we had done an experiment. And uh, it was about two something in the morning. I finally, last summer we worked so much I didn't get to bed usually till about three or four in the morning. Right. But I'd happened to get to bed early enough this time, and there was a voice. I, I, you know, it's one of them things where you don't know if you're awake or you're asleep. But mm-hmm. there was a booming voice in my trailer, and it said, "You better check the GoPro footage." And there I and I woke go. me. And I, I woke booming straight up. Voice. I stood straight up in in my bed, and I said. I gotta go check the GoPro footage. And I get my phone out and I and I and of course as soon as anything happens, I say, uh, you know, hey Siri, what time is it? So it has an audible timestamp, and so we can go back and look and see if there's any data that happened when I had these things right. happen. Well, so we go back and we look. I look through the GoPro that I the only ones I knew was there, and uh, I didn't see anything in the, in that footage. Then uh, a day later, uh, they said, you got to see this. They showed me this footage, and I said, where'd that come from? It was from the GoPro that was on the helicopter. Wait, we had a GoPro on the helicopter. So, and and what oh, you see, oh, and then that flipped and, a switch. And, and and what and what was on, and it was from the same day, the same time, and it and what you'll see is just amazing. It's fantastic, and you you won't believe it when you see it. it's just Nobody, unbelievable. We're not gonna tell anybody. Travis, <laughs> tell us, Travis. Let, let me I, I, <laughs> let, let me ask you this. I kind of put these things into two categories. You have to have mm, here we go. They're they're a physical phenomenon that maybe is on the edge of physics as we understand it, like that would be uh, 
aliens from another planet that just have a way to get here faster than we know to travel. Then the other part is interdimensional things where yeah. we're having wormholes or gates or portals opened up, and we really have no idea what's going on there. If you were a betting man, all of this, what category would you put those in? I actually have a different category for you. I think it's some sort of phenomena that's using quantum physics that uh, that is running the universe, right? Mm-hmm. And and here's the thing. The phenomena that we're being exposed to, this is why people claim to have seen weird things, I think. This is my, my hypothesis. I'm trying to figure out a way to test it. When they say uh, the Bigelow guys said they saw three dogs, I mean three guys with dog heads smoking cigarettes wearing trench coats and top hats on the ranch one time. And that sounds crazy, right? You say, oh, that's the dumbest thing. They're t- chasing ghosts, werewolves, whatever. Or doing drugs. Or doing drugs, yeah, right? right? Well, oh, we check for, we check for drugs. and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know. Right. Well, so here's my thing. Uh, perhaps the phenomena is so odd that our the information that our brain is receiving from our you know, touch, taste, smell, mm-hmm. hearing, sight, uh, and, and whatever our brain is interacting with, if this is a quantum phenomenon, your brain it works through quantum physics, then... It doesn't know how to interpret what it's seeing, and this is the best interpretation that it's getting. So maybe it's not so weird. Maybe it's more of a uh, confusion. Like if uh, you're, you're, it's like seeing a wagon wheel on TV. Yeah, right. Your brain interprets it going backwards. It's really not, but because of the frame rate and the movement between your eye looking at it, it appears because your eye is trying to move it to the nearest. Next spindle yeah, in there, knows, and, yeah. and it it actually, you go, wait a minute, that's going backwards, but it's yeah. not. Yeah, well, it, it appears to be because yeah. of the beat frequency that right. you see, yeah. And you'll see it in tire in car commercials, tire commercials, yeah. and things like that all the time, too. And, and people say, well, y'all can see that outside. I said, only if you're looking at it with a street light. But if you're looking at it with natural sunlight, you'll it's going the right way. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll come back. We'll continue more with Travis Taylor on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. All right, Patriot Mobile. Now, Bubba, you and I have been down this road, and we talk to America Monday through Friday on the big show, and you hear people <clears throat> complaining, saying, I just feel like that I'm a sellout because I'm sending money to companies that are in all this woke stuff. I don't agree with it. Uh, my my principles, my moral convictions, my spiritual convictions, I, I just don't feel good that I'm spending money with these companies, but I don't know where to go. Yeah, you don't want to be financing the very things that you are against in life. Well, I have good news when it comes to sales service. Uh, Patriot Mobile, uh, they're building a whole new economy, one which embraces the values that made America the greatest country on earth. And they are America's only Christian conservative wireless provider, offering dependable nationwide coverage on all three major networks. So you're not going to lose quality. You can get the best possible service in your area because all three of the carriers are available to you. Plus, they offer a coverage guarantee. If you're not happy with the coverage, you can switch to a different network for free uh, without uh, changing carriers. So uh, all this plus the knowledge that you're supporting uh, free speech, sanctity of life, Second Amendment, uh, our military, first responder heroes. Uh, find out more about this 100% U.S.-based customer service team by making the switch so easily by going to patriotmobile.com. That's patriotmobile.com slash Rick Bubba. Just put our names together, Rick Bubba. Or you can call them right now at 878-PATRIOT. I'd, you know, I'd love to see if Patriot mobile phones would work on Skinwalker Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Back on Rick and Bubba University, Travis Taylor uh, is our guest. Uh, we're talking about season four. The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. It will debut on uh, Tuesday, April the 18th, History Channel, 9 o'clock Central Time. Uh, so that's season four. We're trying to get stuff out of Travis about season four. We're not being very successful. Uh, but He's uh, giving us some nuggets, but he's not painting the picture like we want him to, is he? You know, no. I was the chief scientist on UAP Task Force for a long time, and nobody knew about it. So I'm pretty good at keeping <laughs> well, secrets. Right. So let me, we'll get back into what we can get from you. Uh, but I do want to hit Skinwalker Live Tour. Uh, the secret of Skinwalker Ranch Live.com. The secret of Skinwalker Ranch Live.com. 
Uh, May 18th, this tour will kick off in Indianapolis, and then it's going the next day to to, uh, to Akron, Ohio, Detroit, Michigan, the day after that, then the day after that, Milwaukee, and then it'll, it'll go on. Uh, but if you want to see uh, you know, uh, all the different uh, locations and all that, you just go to that, the secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Travis, Live. what are y'all, the Rolling Stones yeah, what, now? What, what, well, are y'all what are we doing? Do? So I'll tell you where that came from. So we're doing, I'm also doing the Ancient Aliens Live Tour. And, right, uh, I remember and, that. Yeah, well, and it did so well because it's basically – you get to be there with us in an episode that you've never seen. We're doing it live, yeah. and and there's interaction. and And I thought, man, we really need this with Skinwalker, so that because so many people have so many questions about Skinwalker, and they want to see that, and we could show them things they haven't seen, kind of okay. like giving them sort of an insider view. Okay. And 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 so the more people that come to it, the more cities we'll get to go to okay. and get to spread this. And some people are saying, well, it's going to take away from the investigation. No, part of the scientific method is to report your results. And uh, so a lot of things we're seeing, there's no scientific journal that would let us publish in. So TV and, and these events right. are our publication uh, okay. and, and spreading the results. Okay. Are you... Um, that makes sense. Are, are you getting criticized from any of the scientific world? you got a lot of PhDs on the wall or any of the higher-ups going, Travis, come on, you're out there, you're, you're acting silly out there in the right. desert. This is not real science. I mean, are you getting any of that kind of blowback? You know, I, I used to, before uh, uh, it all came out about the UAP stuff in the right. last few years, but uh, people have really done a turnabout. You know, mm-hmm. the, the community's turned around. In, in fact, there's a, 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 a really smart guy that uh, uh, that's well-known in the theoretical physics uh, regime, uh, uh, Jack Sarfati, uh, he, somebody asked him on Twitter who, what scientist he listens to. And he actually tweeted back that he listens to Eric Weinstein and Travis Taylor. How about that? <laughs> I was like, wow. You know, that's you a, that's that's how about stuff. that? There yeah. you go. Uh, so is there an experiment that you would like to do that you thought that maybe you think would solve this thing once and for all, but maybe it's not financially possible. Maybe the scope of it's too big that you want to do. You haven't been able to do yet. Well, I'm on. Are you getting pushed back like you did on digging? I will call out somebody that we just talked about. People are saying that's just fringe stuff or whatever. Uh, So I believe if there are gravitational anomalies being created when these things occur, it's possible that the LIGO interferometer, that's the big interferometer. We have two of them, one out in Washington, one down in Louisiana that uh, can detect gravitational waves. Mm -hmm. It's possible that there would be, a bad data point in some of their records that they threw out. And I've, begged, I've asked them many times to let me see their data and look for bad data points. Maybe even have an AI go through it and look for it. And uh, they want nothing to do with us. They, they won't, they won't communicate with us. Won't talk to us about it and, and won't, won't allow us to uh, see it. And they say, well, you, you guys aren't doing real, real science. I'm like, well, how about that? So there's still some people that say that kind of stuff and nonsense. Well, what, what do they care if you want to look at their Thank old you. past data? That, that's what I that's, that was my question exactly because they're, what they're eventually right? just deleting it off yeah, of a hard drive. Just, that's exactly right. And so uh, why right? So it's just like uh, the or old. What do they know? The mm-hmm. old SETI data. When did they know it? You know, I don't know if you guys have heard this. You when know, the old know what? Yeah, what do they know? Right, <laughs> the old SETI data, the yep. Search for Extraterrestrial yep. Intelligence. Yep. Yep. Well, so they uh, this group in Toronto took an artificial intelligence and had it look at the old data from the 850 closest stars, and it's already found eight star systems that have technological signatures suggesting there are civilizations around us in, in eight star systems close to us. Well, and you know Jody Foster, she saw something. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, but but let's talk about that for a minute because we have just had our own government that is releasing things. You know uh, that we got all these pilots that have seen Rick's, these strange. Rick things. wants me to say TikTok. Yeah, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Yeah. But he, but I mean, he's leading me to say TikTok. And and some of these things, if I and I may be oversimplifying it because I need to, is they're saying we don't know what these things are. Uh, we're not coming down on them. We even changed the name now from UFO to what? To UAP. 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 Unidentified anomalous yeah. phenomena. Yeah. And, why and, did they do that? And well, UFO I, was so much easier to yeah. say. Well, I can tell you why. Okay, tell uh, us. So Jay Stratton actually did that. Uh, and the re- one of the reasons is he was looking for nuts and bolts crap, and he realized some of these things appeared more like balls of plasma or something right. unusual. And uh, so he he changed it for, for that perspective, make it a bigger, broader scope where UFO would be a subset. But the other thing is when he would call congressional staffers and need to brief them, say, we need to brief so-and-so member on the UFO 
phenomenal. They, they, you know, I'm not talking to UFO guy. But right. when he would say UAP, there they would go. they would see it. It's right? almost a marketing thing, a yeah. PR thing. Yeah. But there's no question these pilots see some sort of craft. Oh, no question at all. That that yeah. we that we we don't know what it is, and it could be which we we and, really. Really, there's two bad scenarios. Very bad scenarios. Uh, is that the other countries have developed things we don't have. Yep. And 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 they're how super- likely is that? Are superior to what we have. Well, yep. so I'll tell you the breakthrough. If it's doing the things that it appears to be doing in in all the data we have, uh, it, it would have taken a, a Manhattan Project level uh, project, and we would see the campuses where there are hundreds, maybe thousands of the brightest minds in that country uh, conglomerating and doing the work. Right. So, and we don't see that. And, and I'll tell you what uh, Senator Rubio told us on the task force. He said, you better hope that it's aliens. Right. Because if it turns out to be the Russians or the Chinese, we're in trouble. Right. And that, well, that, I would yeah. say if it's aliens, we may be in trouble. Well, I'd if say absolutely. Ill intent. I'd say we're in trouble one way or the other. We better yeah. get off our rears and get to work. Yeah, right? that's and, and you know, I guess it's a better hope if it is something for another, another planet or, or whatever that they may not mean us any ill will. Where our enemies, we know they do. I, I'm just trying to try find some silver lining. Rich looking for the yeah, silver, right. for some <laughs> silver lining. But um, so, how how likely yeah. is it? And and we've had this conversation. I know you've been asked, but we know for a fact when the stealth fighter, the stealth bomber, was being tested, that we intentionally okay. flew it near airplanes that had former military pilots. So they would report what they saw without knowing what they were seeing. So they could get honest feedback on how it was acting, what the radar was, what the, you know, how they were going to be able to describe it, if you will. Uh, How possible is like the Tic Tac stuff falling into that? Is that really maybe some of our stuff? No, it's not. So we we asked every every level and the the 2020 uh, national defense authorization act empowered us to go and ask at any classification level and they're supposed to respond and if they didn't respond they were violating the the law and uh everybody always said no it's not us it's not us it's not us all the way up to you know four star level and and so that's a you know, would they tell you you think <clears throat> Would they would they say would they Travis don't tell you? lose sleep about it mm-hmm. we don't know what it is but don't lose would they kind of throw you off the trail and they, they, say, they don't w- don't keep looking well by law they're supposed to right. and and they they would because they wouldn't want to waste uh, expenditure on uh, on on <clears throat> what they're doing because you think about it if it's something in the area and they shut down training. It costs something like thirty thousand dollars an hour to fly the F eighteens, right? And, and they have to fly the F eighteen so many hours to keep their training level up. Right. And if they shut down the range, they're losing money. <clears throat> that 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 number keeps ticking. All right, we'll come back. Uh, we'll wrap things up on this edition of Rick and Bubba Uni- the University, the podcast with Travis Taylor. Right after this. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. All right, so Travis Taylor's with us. We've got a few more minutes here on uh, Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Travis, have you have you ever thought about calling in the old Rocket City Rednecks to help you out? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we've, we've kind of, uh, I've had my dad, he's been, uh, he's, he's scoured everything on Google Earth, and he's yeah. got so many ideas and things. And uh, Does he uh, call you and say, hey, yeah, I was looking at this, what about this? What every about day, every day. Yeah, That's he, good. Son, you need to stop by on your way to work this morning and have a cup of coffee. I got to show you something. You know, it yeah. happens every day. But that's cool that y'all have, oh, absolutely. have that same so, interest. So we're, we're running out of time. Of course, we could talk two more hours. But sure. get, you can't prove it, no scientific background in it. But give us your thoughts, your best guess, what I said a minute ago when you go to bed at night and you're laying there thinking about things. What are, What's happening with the, the Tic Tac and the Skinwalker Ranch and several other things that we've seen come to light lately. What, what do you think is really happening? Well, I think it's all connected in some way or the other. Uh, I think that uh, something is happening here on Earth. It has been happening for a long time, and I think we're getting smart enough now that we they, it's harder to hide it from us. It's harder to hide it from the general public because the general public's get everybody's got a, a high definition sensor yep. in their pocket. Yep. Uh, you know, there's information everywhere. And, and I, I think it's going to be difficult to keep this under the rug for much longer. There's something going on. What it is, I'm, I'm, I'm still open to what it's going to end up being, but 
uh, whether it's aliens, something else, some other phenomena, or even our near peers, right? Uh, but I think there's something serious happening, and we need to get to the bottom of it. When you sit here, you know, and you provided for us, or the, or the the team did, when you look at the timeline, the historic timeline of Skinwalker Ranch, it is really, really something. Uh, and there's so many things that have happened there that could, you know, we, we start getting strange noises in 1906 hmm. uh, after, you know, everything happened, as you said, with the the Utes uh, and, uh, and you know, what, what happened with the relocation of their tribes by the U.S. government uh, surrounding Skinwalker Ranch. I didn't know the Buffalo soldier, soldiers were stationed uh, near there as, wi- as they, well. They actually signed the Mesa in 1833 and put a Templar, I mean, a uh, Freemason symbol on it. So why don't uh, get Greg going? Yeah, don't tell Greg that. <laughs> 1886. And then in 1906, we have a first newspaper report of strange noises. Th- then we get into, you know, the first bunch that bought it, the Myers family. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we get down in 1940, 1960. Uh, we have UFO and Skinwalker activity claims. Then the Arnold family comes along. They see UFO. Sherman family comes along, uh, you know, and, and then Bigelow acquires the property. And, and then the NIDS program operates on the property. Uh, I mean, guys, it, the, the list just goes on and on. And so this is not something that started like, Hey, let's do a show about this place. And I mean, it, it's had a history. Uh, Rick, there's a there's a petroglyph there that's a thousand years old that shows uh, strange things in the sky over the ranch, and uh, so it it's been around for a long time. You you though knowing your stuff, and and there's different theories, and we've talked about all of them. You, you we've had two. You've offered a third. Let's say that I am from another world. Mm-hmm. Now let's go to scientifically, or and I know some of this is a guess because it might exceed what you know. Why? What would? Why would this place be something I would explore? I would investigate. What are they trying to pull? And I know you have to just guess on this, but I'm trying to figure out their motivation. Yeah, what, if, if that, yeah, put, if that, your, if, put yourself if in the alien mind. Any, yeah, if that, what do they do? And I know there's only so much you can do there, but <laughs> because you don't know who they are or what they are, if they even exist. But what what if there's something there that's uh, primordial to the universe? It's been there since the beginning, right? And it's important. These these people understand it and they use it. What if there's these points like this all around the the universe and they use them? You know, as nexus points, travel points or something, jump points, if you want to use a science fiction term. Or what if there's some mineral or material uh, inside there that we don't know about yet, and, and they're, they're wanting to get in there and, and use it or, or, or mine it or take it. And, you know, there's a lot of actual uh, lore, anyway, that, that there are aliens mining stuff inside yeah. the Mesa. I don't know if any of that's true or not, but but what if, there's something there. People go places not just unless you're on vacation. You go to places because there's some way it's going to benefit you, right? And you do things there because it's going to. Be, so there's something about that area that's benefiting whatever this phenomena is, and that's why it's happening there. Is it possible? And I hate to 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 pull up intergalactic pirate, but what if back before anything was really really going on this planet yet and i'm talking it could be millions or thousands depending mm-hmm. on what theory you you buy into um that did somebody leave something or hide it here and there's somebody else looking for it or or uh they Indiana were jones or it got stuck right it's, there's the possibility that it got stuck in uh in the it, it's it's own uh and and one of the things that could one of our running fun hypothesis a rescue operation it, it well is that there's a some extraterrestrial asset in there and it uses a, a direct to mind uh interaction with its pilots but there's no crew and it keeps reaching out to try and find the crew to do mm-hmm. something and that's why people are seeing weird stuff because our brains aren't like the brains of whoever it came with can't it. decode it and, yeah. and, and so we see weird things and have weird messages mm-hmm. and that sort of thing and and that's one working uh you know it's more of a fun fantasy as opposed to hypothesis because until we get in there and find something, you you know you can't test that. Well, we saw that in the earlier uh, ep- the earlier seasons. There was one, like you said, a theory y'all were developing is is something signaling 
and they keep checking and coming and trying to find the crew or whatever, and they can't find it. And that's why they keep disappearing and coming back. They keep getting some kind of hey, it's like Voyager yeah, yeah. in the Star Trek. And then movie, I think trying about, to phone home. Then yeah. I think about <laughs> then I think about the simplistic, you know, things we, that we know in our history. Okay, let's talk about how far advanced the Europeans were. Yeah. from some of the, the 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 Native Americans, and what did they do? Well, they took advantage of them because they had things of great value. They didn't know were of any value. And so the Europeans came in and took advantage of knowing that's what you have here is pretty valuable, but they didn't Gold. know it. But they didn't know it. And I know that's really simplistic, but I'm thinking of that, that same. It, it might not be. You know, what yeah. if there's uh, something in there that we're not going to discover for 100, 200,000 years, whatever, and, and, uh, and somebody else knows it's there and they use it? Mm-hmm. What if it's like gold to us uh, or you know oil to mm-hmm. us right. it runs their their industries and they're here getting it maybe they they could be simply uh, you know a, a power contractor you know, a mining company. It could be something as simple it, as that. And if we and that's kind were, of the road I was on. Yeah. It, it, I, and I'm trying to think if we were watching, say, some lost tribe in Africa, and we had agreed not to mess with them. Okay, we're going to let them evolve on their own. But we're watching. The day that one of them jumps off a cliff with a parachute, we go, they took a big step forward. And then they've developed the ability to fly. And then they develop rocket engines. And they're going to nuclear their moon. Nuclear bombs. Yeah, New, yeah nu- mm-hmm. nuclear weapons. And they're, they're traveling to their nearest moon and back. And they're sending robots to other planets in their solar system. The, the evolution is happening. Do you think they're watching us? And we, like you'd said earlier, we've got to the point where they, we can detect them better than we used to because we have the means to do it now. Well, there's certainly that, but I don't buy into the prime directive at all. The right. Star Trek idea that, oh, they're going to not mess with us because we're right. not technolo- technologically advanced. When have we ever followed a prime directive? If we see something we want, we go and take it and assimilate well, whoever's there, you know, whether it's good for them or not. Well, sometimes and, and, with animals we will. We won't mess with them. We'll just watch them. Yeah, well, in zoos. So right. that's the zoo <laughs> hypothesis, right? right. Well, if it, I doubt we're in a zoo. It, we could be in a zoo, but uh, I, I would suspect that if – if they're advanced enough and they want stuff and we've got it, they'll just come get it. Kind of so, like, uh, we, you know, walking across the yard, you don't care if you kick over an anthill if you're planting flowers or whatever. Right. right? right. Yeah. So from that standpoint, we, we better figure out what it is just from a national survivability. Or yeah, planet security situation. That's why Elon Musk wants to get off of the planet and move to Mars and, and, and he expand He wants to have humanity. a backup. Yeah. yeah. Has he reached out to y'all? No. Uh, <laughs> Have we, you ever met him, by uh, the way? No, we actually reached out to him once uh, when I was on the task force, and he was never really interested. Okay. Uh, so yeah, but that, It just seems like it'd be, it'd be just like him to go, i got to be down there in the middle of all that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. we, he's never shown any interest so far, but hey, Elon, if you're listening, give us a call. Right, <laughs> and he does listen to Rick and Bubba University. Of course. Everybody knows that. Of course he does. Uh, all right, so let me hit a few things before we have to wrap up. I do want to remind everybody again, if you want to be a Skinwalker Insider, and this means you actually get to interact and see some things that um, you know that they're working on. Skinwalker uh, hyphen ranch dot com. You can do that. Uh, season four starts Tuesday, April eighteenth on History Channel at nine o'clock Central PM. Uh, then, if you want to see Skinwalker live, the tour we got four dates right now: May 18, 19, 20, and twenty one. It starts on the eighteenth in Indianapolis. Go to the Secret of Skinwalker Ranch Live. Dot com and uh, how these are attended will kind of dictate if it continues on to other places. So uh, you can um, you can do that. Yeah, I'm Travis, trying to get get a show here in Birmingham. Oh, we got yeah, we love that. Yeah. We, we love that. that. Do you have a ham station there? By the way, uh, no, we don't. We've been talking about here we that. Go. We've we act- we'd like to see a special event here station there. All the ham guys told here me to tell we you go. that. We act. Jay Jay Stratton and I were working on that, getting because uh, he's a ham operator, and we've got a guy that's wanting to bring us a, a rig out there and set it up. So we're thinking about it. We'll, we'll see. You brought up ham. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah. So uh, so and also are y'all? Are, I know. Uh, y'all are already starting to talk about season five. Are y'all going to try to? We almost ended up on season four. Are y'all going to try to come back to us again to, to be Rick, part of it? Rick, we got on the. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, got, yeah, yeah, I know we got cut, but I'm talking about. Well, and, and can, actually, what, what can we you, survive it? What, what, I don't know question, that we want yeah. to. Yeah. What got you cut uh, was just time. I mean, right. it, it was. We yeah, did, that's what you Travis, say. Yeah, Travis, that's what you say. We're good. Y'all Trust didn't me, want. We've us. been close enough. We didn't want y'all didn't want us launching that sound into the universe. I got it. Travis, thank you for being with us. Oh, buddy. thank y'all for having me. Come back me. again. Enjoy it. We always enjoy it. Travis Taylor, The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, Season 4, starting Tuesday, April 18th 
on the History Channel, 9 p.m. Central Time. Thanks to all of you for being with us on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. And Elon Collis. Ha, ha, ha.